I was with uh, my friend Steph Jones and Julian Bonetta who produced the song. We kind of just like, we're hitting a lot of walls and we we're like, you know what? Let's just literally write nonsense, no joke. And that's how the song happened. A lot of our justification for lyrics was, well, it's nonsense, so it doesn't have to make any sense at all and we can just have fun. I just know someone's gonna watch this video and be like, lyricism where? Like, what? And like, I promise you there's other songs that have much deeper metaphorical meanings. But when you like someone, you don't have that. I could talk for hours and hours on end about a subject that I can't, not when you're cute, not when you're attractive. English, don't know it. Like, completely unlearn. Think I only want one number in my phone. I might change your contact to don't leave me alone. You said you like my eyes and you like to make them roll. Treat me like a queen, now you got me feeling thrown. When I feel like a queen, it has nothing to do with anybody else, you know? It's, it's usually when I'm feeling the most comfortable with myself, I'm feeling on top of it. I'm just feeling really inspired and I'm feeling like I'm um, in control of my life and my destiny. When people see that value in you and people also treat you at the level that you deserve to be treated because they also recognize your value and worth, that's a bomb ass feeling. But I can't help myself when you get close to me Baby, my tongue goes numb, sounds like bleh, bleh, bleh I don't want no one else, baby, I'm in too deep Here's a little song I wrote, it's about you and me um, When I say blah, blah, bleh, that is peak lyricism it's one of those where you're breaking the fourth wall. You know, you're like, that's such an actor thing to say, but um, you really are sort of just making fun of the fact that writing songs like can be this like very serious, uh, deep introspective process, or it can also be what rhymes with me, blee. I'll be honest, looking at you got me thinking nonsense. Caught wheels in my stomach when you walk in. And when you got your arms around me, oh, it feels so good. I had to jump the octave. I jumped the octave because I could. That was really, that was really all there was to it. We were just like having so much fun riffing off of each other. It's like, oh, it feels so good. I gotta jump the octave. And like, we literally were doing it in the moment. And then we all had to like look at each other multiple times throughout, you know, making the song. Like, is that the stupidest thing? Or is it genius? I think I got an ex, but I forgot him. And I can't find my chill, I must have lost it. I don't even know I'm talking nonsense. I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Anything that would make me start talking nonsense is usually someone that I just feel uh, really excited to get to know. And I don't know why, I don't know why when I'm around people that I'm not, oh, this is actually gonna sound terrible. <laughs> When you're around someone really cute, like, don't be offended if my personality is at like a two, because that just means I really like you. And if my personality is at a 10, I got some bad news for you, homie. Like, it's probably not a fairy tale ending. I'm talking all around the clock. I'm talking hope nobody knocks. I'm talking opposite of soft. I'm talking wild, wild thoughts. I am a huge Rihanna fan, like a big, 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 and take a shot every time I mention her in a video because it's getting ridiculous. But I definitely like wild thoughts, obviously, is just like a great way to sum it up without being too literal. But then at the same time, it was like for all the fans that know I'm just like the dumbest Rihanna fan, then. It's also a little nod to that and that song, which is like an ass thrower for sure. You gotta keep up with me. I got some young energy. I got the L-O-V. How do you do this to me? I wasn't necessarily listening to my like rap gods before it, uh, but someone had mentioned to me, they were like, yeah, this like feels like your rap verse. I was like, oh, that's so interesting. I wouldn't classify myself as a rapper. I'm not coming for anyone's careers. This song catchier than chicken pox is. I bet your house is where my other sock is. Woke up this morning, thought I'd write a pop hit. How quickly can you take your clothes off pop quiz? 
I had all of these extra outro lyrics that didn't even make the song that I was like, oh, this would be really fun to kind of put them in live because I think changing up songs for audiences is always one of my favorite things to do. They just get excited. They don't even know what's going on. They're just like, something's different. And like, that's exciting. During the first show in Atlanta, I had kind of rewritten an outro specifically for Atlanta and they loved it and um, I think after that I was like, well, I can't just do Atlanta, otherwise all the other cities feel like shit. So I ended up writing outros for every city, some very dirty, some very funny, some very tame. My favorite was Philly because that's my hometown and it was, um, this crowd is giving me all the endorphins. I wish someone would rearrange my organs. Philly is the city I was born in. And so you can kind of see what I'm saying. 